Hi everybody, Ben here from Artless Ordinary. So, with my cloud pour actually working last night, I was super thrilled. So I'm going to do another one, but <laughs> if you don't know me by now, I love purple. So I'm going to do a purple cloud pour. But I'm hoping to try to do it in um, a ring pour instead of just a uh, straight pour. So that is the plan. Now, the colours I have are Montmartre Purple and Montmartre... Oh, this bottle's heavier, more paint in it. Montmartre Light Purple. So light purple is an opaque... Um, the purple is a semi-transparent. Then I have mixed white and the Deco Art Satin Enamel in pure white. So I'll give you my mixtures because I, I had a little bit too much paint last night. I don't think I need it at all. So I've reduced my numbers just slightly. So I have 40 grams of paint. 80 grams of Floetrol for both the purple and the light purple. And I've got... The warm weather's come, so I've got a couple of little flying midges inside. Um, my white is 26 grams paint, 13 grams satin enamel, and 78 grams Floetrol. So that is... Virtually the same ratio as last night. I've just reduced each colour by 5 grams paint and 10 grams Floetrol. Um, the satin enamel, I've just mm, reduced the number to equate to the same amount. So it's still 2 to 1. Um, but with this one, it's 2 parts paint, 1 part um, satin enamel. And then that's still mixed two to one flow troll. So I hope that makes sense. I can always call, read, um, give the details again, but if you just rewind it and just write down what I've measured, you'll work it out. So ultimately for last night's painting, I only used 15 grams of the satin enamel and tonight I'm only using 13 grams. So if it works out, this is 236 mils, so you're not using a lot of the paint to actually get your, the desired effect. So I'll put that away. I have my cup. You know, I've had a couple of midges flying around and they're very frustrating because I'm doing my best to keep them out of their paintings. Always happens here, especially once the warm weather just starts. They come out of every... Now there's one again. Alrighty. So I put a little bit of white in the bottom. I don't want too, too much because that too much at the bottom that comes out last will give you that big white in the middle. You kind of want it a little bit um, mixed in. Nope, couldn't catch him. So I'm going to do the same. I'm going to pour it in down the side. Doing smaller amounts at first because this will be in the center. And then increasing it as the cup gets more full, you increase the amount that you put in. Is it going to drip? Nope. So the reason I use this paper cup is because it um, is able to be bent to a spout. Yeah, I couldn't help myself. As soon as I 
got the last one to work, I'm like, no, nah, i got to make myself a nice white one. I made a purple one. Because I'm going to try and do a ring pour, hopefully it'll actually um, work out quite well. So just in case, I'm going to put in a larger amount of white now. Because if I have too much paint for the cup, I will be using um, the purples on the edges as a flow extender. Because I want to be able to have enough space in the cup to be able to do rings and that's not as easy to do don't know what that was but I could see it a thick piece moving in the cup so I think I'm going to leave it as this because I would like to be able to do a ring pour So this color, this is the white. You want to get as much out as possible. You don't want to leave any of that in behind because that's going to give you all your desired effects. Alrighty. Now I'm going to put this aside. So I'll probably still tip a lot of paint off, but it doesn't hurt to just put some of this on the edges, just in case, should help it move that little bit better. And I do have my corner catcher aside just in case I feel I need to use it but I actually don't think I will need to but might as well have it there ready in case So much harder doing things with my left hand. Just a bit of paint here, I might as well paint that very corner because they're the ones I have the most issue with are these corner bits just so there's something there in case it doesn't go all the way over the corner properly all right and I'm actually going to do the same with this purple just get the paint on that corner just so I know it is covered in case I have difficulties getting the paint to go all the way over you can tell transparent to an opaque alrighty so we are getting some effects in this cup already a little bit. So 
we're going to pinch it. Now I'm going to do my best to do a ring. Let me just make sure it is recording before I go ahead. Yep, that time is going up. Sorry I do that, but if I if I don't and I waste the whole video, it's it's just quite frustrating for two seconds just to check, make sure it is recording. Okay. I hope by doing the ring pour, I don't get too much white and not enough of the dark purple. That would be a little bit frustrating. But that's also the reason why we do these test runs. really cool in there okay let's let the paint move over to this edge more because it always runs close to this edge so just letting it go to there and then when I put it back down it's going to slowly come back and I'm going to blow torch it to get rid of any bubbles my paper towels ready. Oh, I haven't even got my gloves on. What am I doing? Okay, so we can see the clouds kind of forming. They will form more as I start um, stretching them out and tilting. Corner catcher up here. Oops, oh, I'm making a mess. Get my corner catcher ready. I've torn my glove, but it should be okay. <clears throat> okay, so first of all, I'm just going to go side to side, cover the canvas without going over the edges. Or try not to go over the edges. Bringing it back. 
if I can get a bit closer to this top corner up here. Mm, it's going to start going over. Alright, so now I've got to work out which way do I want to go first. Let's go this way. I'm going to keep the corner catcher there for the moment and re-tip off afterwards because I think I have a lot of paint but to get it over those corners I'm going to um, lose a lot so I thought if I do this we'll see how this goes in the corner bring it back a bit take that off and then put it here so I can hold the canvas a bit better bring it down and get to this corner excellent so we can see little cloud cells forming paint is going to want to go this way better I'm going to destroy that ring if I did that top one first and then did the bottom So that's what you got to do. You got to watch what your pattern is doing. I still may have trouble because that ring is going to go a little bit out of shape. Maybe I can get it back to shape. Yeah, I should be able to. Okay. Corner catcher done. I'm going to get that up and out the way. Excellent. Now, let's just move this paint around. Get some. Just got to get the paint to move over itself a bit. I'm going to try and get rid of this swirl here. There's that little midgy again. Upsetting me. Alright, that's it. I just found that was just a little bit distracting having that. And that was because I used the corner catcher. It caused that to kind of have a funny shape to it. So. I might try off a little bit in this bottom corner only because I don't want to lose this darker purple that I have up here. So just going to take some paint off. And then come back. Hopefully that would have caused a bit more friction to happen underneath. And Cause some pearls, it's pearls, cells, clouds. I kind of think of them as cloud pearls. So now it's just a matter of the paint I can't really move it too much more I'm gonna always have that same pattern in the middle so now I just gotta to, got to work out the edges which way do I want it to be do I want to scrunch it up this way 
which will kind of give me a big purple space down the bottom here, but then it kind of looks a little bit sparse. So should I bring it back? Squash in all those kind of lines a little bit. And I think that gives me a much better pattern by scrunching those up that I did. Now, my corners should be good. But I'm just going to check them while I'm here. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't think I can do much, too much more with this. Because a lot of it's not going to move too much more. Unless I try and tip a lot off a corner. When I think I'm pleased with it. I didn't really want that centerpiece to be right in the center. But I can't really move it off any more than what it already is. So, I'm going to call the movement of this done. But I am going to give it another torch. Oops, just flicked a bunch of paint in my room. Sorry. <laughs> I just saw paint flick off and land on everything. So now, just going to give it another little torch, get rid of some bubbles and see if it causes any more pearls to form, clouds to form, whatever we would like to call them. Just keep the blowtorch moving, don't let it settle. Alright, that's good enough. Now, what is that? Okay, I don't know if this is in the paint or not, but I'm going to try and grab it now, just in case. Yeah. Looked like a tiny little bit of dried white. It was just looking out of place. So, it, it is cloudy has kind of got cloudy forms and pearls different to the last one different to the blue um a different reaction maybe because i had less paint maybe i have less paint on the canvas i'm not too sure you don't always want everything to be identical i just don't really know what to make out of that middle bit it's not really um anything in particular it's just kind of a, a pattern isn't it so I did get slightly close with the blowtorch in one or two spots. You can kind of tell by the way the paint reacts. It's the flow troll in it that seems to do it. So, I think this is cool. Um, I wanted a nice purple one, but I still wanted the fluffy cloud type of thing. I'm going to pause it and let it settle because I think it needs a uh, good five ten minutes to see what the ultimate picture is going to be all right we'll be back okay we are back so it's been maybe about eight minutes i think so what i've done while off camera as soon as um we went off camera i scraped the bottom edges and then i scraped it again just before i came back on camera so i'm not losing too much more paint now um it's kind of done what it wants to do by falling over the edges. Doing the ring pour is giving me quite different effects. So it you can see there is rings in there. Um, I do kind of prefer the composition of the blue one. But this one is still really cool. I love how it's just so different. You get these nice kind of cells or pearls clouds whichever way you want to call it kind of just appear and kind of fl fluff up and push other paint out the way then you've got this nice kind of ring cloud in the middle i think this is really pretty um but different that's the thing it's you're going to get a different look each time you do it and that's the fun part about this so I'm loving this, um, can't wait to do more. 
but I'll probably give you a few days break um, of cloud pours and I'll do something else just so to mix it up a little bit. I like to not always give you guys the same thing um, too often. But I've, I've got other colours in mind that I think will look pretty cool. Um, I think a nice pink one would look good. And maybe even a, a green. But when I say green, I don't mean like rich green. I mean more like a viridian or um, kind of an aqua green. So they look pretty, pretty alright. But they will be done um, a few days into the future. So, but... Cloud pour um, success. I'm happy I've got it working. So thrilled. And ultimately, I used 13 grams of satin enamel paint to do this. So that, that jar is quite happily going to last me quite a while to do paintings like this. So it may cost a little bit more initially to get it um, compared to like your your Montmartre in the big bottles, but it's a, it's a good thing to do because you are going to get beautiful effects and kind of stuff that you you don't always get by using the normal paints that you use. And I just love my cup. It looks so beautiful in there. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but. <laughs> I love looking at the cups before I throw them away. My grandma used to always read tea bags, so I think my cups are a little bit more fun to look at than a tea bag cup. But yeah, so this is a cloud pour. I'm really, really happy. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. So I'm going to bring you down for a close up. So there we go. The cloud pour in purples and and a ring pour. So a ring cloud pour. Um, <laughs> I like combining the two different names to kind of make a technique. But let's have a quick look at these clouds. They're nice and fluffy and kind of got good shape. We've got the rings with pearls forming, um, clouds forming. Not as white as in the blue one. The blue one kind of stayed very blue. But that, that's probably because I did it as a ring pour. You're swirling the cup around a lot. The colours mix. So do keep that in mind. But there's all like little pearls and clouds all the way around. Really interesting. So that's where I got a little bit close with the blowtorch. See how they've kind of reacted a little bit? So try not to do that. It happens sometimes also when you're doing Dutch pours as well, I notice. But this is it. I hope you guys like it. And I would like to say thanks to all the subscribers. I've got 304, is it? 304 subscribers, and I'm so happy. You guys are what make me want to do things differently to show you new, new stuff and try out new paints. I can only buy new paints every so often. Um, I don't make any money off anything. This is just stuff I do for fun. So it takes time and effort. But I love it. I enjoy painting. I hope you guys like watching what I create. So thank you. Have a great night and comment, like, share and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you tomorrow for another artwork. Alright, bye everyone.